Hello and uh, welcome to a PWN design tutorial. I know it's been a really long time since I up uploaded anything regarding any kind of like tutorial or uh, rendering uh, landscape design or anything like that. I've just been super busy. Um, life got a little hectic, but I don't want to talk about that right now. Let's go ahead and just get on with this tutorial because this is what you came here for. Uh, so as you can tell, this is for Octane Render. Um, this is going to be the tutorial summary. So this is the first video in a series. So there's not much in the program here. This is more explaining what Octane is, who it's for, limitations, some pros and cons, stuff like that. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, let's get the uh, slideshow going. So what is Octane? <clears throat> Octane is a super fast, unbiased render engine that computes on the GPU rather than the CPU. Um, and what this means is renders can be completed in the fraction of the time uh, than conventional CPU based render engines can do them. Uh, in most cases, I'll, I'll say in most cases, uh, a lot of the times um, Octane will render out scenes slower depending on what's happening and depending on the card used or the CPU that's being used and how many CPUs are being used in a render farm, things like that. Uh, but on a, a head to head, toe to toe basis, uh, Octane most of the time will outperform a CPU based render engine um, in speed as well as any other com com computative uh, instructions. <clears throat> Octane comes in two different formats. There's the standalone and the plugin. The standalone is used for visual visual <laughs> man I can't talk today. Used for visualization purposes. Can be used without additional software. Um, so that's the standalone. The plugin can be used in a variety of different 3D modeling and animation applications, uh, but is not a standalone option. You actually have to own the standalone um, before you can use the plugin, because the the plug all the all the plugin does is allows, uh, say, if you're using Cinema 4D, it allows Cinema 4D to crosstalk to Octane. Uh, as a standalone. So in order to have the plugin, you need to have the standalone, but you don't need the standalone, uh, or you, but you don't need the plugin to use the standalone, if that makes sense. Uh, so why GPU rendering? Uh, with this little uh, performance sheet right here provided by NVIDIA, uh, and I have little uh, things down here that you can see, GFLOPS equals GigaFLOPS, and FLOPS equals floating point operations, and in short, GFLOPS equals a measurement of a computer's computational power. So you see here on the left side in GFLOPS, the higher the, the number, uh, the larger the number, the faster it's able to compute. Uh, and then over here you can see this is gigabytes a second. Um, the higher the number here, the more that it's able to push through on bandwidth. Um, and that gives you a time for, timeline here of how much uh, graphics cards have uh, been developing over the course of uh, so 10 years here over the you know difference between CPUs. So the green bar here is NVIDIA's GPUs and the blue bars here or the blue lines are actually CPUs and uh, be more uh, uh, be more direct these are Intel CPUs. So as the numbers get higher and higher uh, the sh and the graph goes and the line goes higher and higher in the graph uh, that just means that it's becoming faster and more efficient. Uh, in short, anyways. So uh, that's what you can expect. Oop, I went a little bit too far. That's what you can expect with uh, a single graphics card like the G4780 Ti is outperforming an Ivy Bridge uh, uh, CPU uh, that came out back in 2013. So this this chart chart is a little bit um, a little bit too outdated for today's standards. But at the the point remains, uh, GPUs are still outperforming CPUs. Uh, when it comes to rendering in most cases. The next one is a similar scene comparison. So this is a little landscape that I made specifically just for testing here. So it's nothing too special. On the left, we have C4D's physical renderer. And on the right, we have Octane Render. And now uh, the, the right is actually done in standalone, the standalone application for Octane. So I wasn't using the plugin. And then below that, I have all the information that we need for it. So for the physical render, I did it both at uh, 720p uh, with the default render setting. So I didn't change anything. I just selected the render and went with it. And it took about seven minutes. With Octane, 
uh, I did a, the same resolution. I used the path tracing kernel. So that's the kernel that we'll we'll get into this a little bit later. But path tracing is a little a lot more accurate than the default um, uh, default kernel that is selected by you know by default in Octane. Uh, and I used the default settings for that kernel. I didn't change anything. 500 samples. And uh, it only took about seven hundred or seven seconds. So we you know, not and you'll, you'll be able to look here between the two images. This one has much better lighting, better shadows, and better quality. Uh, a lot better color representation. And over here we we're not getting a lot here. I and mean, obviously we can change the settings up a little bit in the physical render to get something a little bit better looking. But uh, for the for the most part, it, it proves my point here. Uh, Octane is very awesome at what it does, and it does it very quickly. So let's go ahead and the next one. What are the limitations? So things to know. Uh, limitations of GPU rendering, and I just have a few things here that came to my mind. There's probably more, so this is by no means a exact um, a exact list, but these are just a few things that came to my mind. So the first one is fairly new. Uh, new technology tends to have less features and more bugs. And also less, I have a typo there, sorry, less support and a smaller knowledge base for troubleshooting. Uh, smaller development teams and fewer updates. And similar to new software, although this is more di direct directed towards the actual physical development of the software. Octane is well developed, however it's it, it took many years to get to where it is now. So, uh, and, and Octane's um, community is actually awesome. They are responsive, they're knowledgeable, and they are more than happy to help if you have any questions. Uh, but this might apply to other GPU renders out there. Octane isn't the only one that's on the market. It's just my preferred one. Um, but that might be the case for other uh, GPU renderers out there. Next is the hardware and software compatibility. And many GPU renderers, including Octane, have hardware limitations. And as of this video that I'm making right now, Octane requires an NVIDIA card to work. Uh, CUDA is what drives the back end, so not only do you need an NVIDIA card, but you also need an NVIDIA card with CUDA cores. Now, I could be wrong about this, uh, because I haven't really done a lot of um, research into NVIDIA cards in a long time. For the majority of the cards they make, they will have some CUDA core, or a small amount of CUDA cores or a large amount of CUDA cores that you can get on a card. Um, I don't think they make any right now that don't have CUDA cores already implemented on the card itself, but I could be wrong about that. Um, I have a small 710, uh, it's not even a GTX card, it's just a small office uh, uh, graphics card that I use for displaying my monitor out when I'm using Octane, and I can render on that, and it was only like 40 bucks. So you can use Octane Render on that, and it, it's actually pretty awesome and quick still, but it's definitely not the best. Uh, and the additional limitations that I didn't fit on the other uh, slide is uh, memory limitations. So your scenes that you create are limited to the amount of GPU memory your graphics card has. If you have a 2 gigabyte card, you will only have 2 gigabytes or even less than that in most cases because um, the graphics card will reserve some memory for other uh, processes and information uh, that you'll have to work with. Uh, that's substantially smaller than the possible 512 plus gigabytes that CPU renders can work with when you install a lot of RAM. So, um, a bypass for this is utilizing out-of-core memory, which is an option in Octane. However, this memory is slower and can be quite buggy, and can cause crashes to the software as well as data loss. Now, it's not data loss as in if it crashes the program, uh, it's going to erase things off your hard drive. When I say data loss, I mean it's going to close your scene, so anything that you had set up, you're going to have to reset it up after you relaunch the program. Um, but if it's crashing because you run out of memory, you probably should go back and optimize your scene before you start rendering out again anyways. So who is Octane Render for? Is it for you? Um, to simply put it, it's for anyone, really. Hobbyists, freelancers, animators, small studio teams, large studio teams. Um, I use it all the time. It's actually my go-to nowadays. Um, and then it's also for production companies. And Octane can be adapted into workflows of production companies fairly easily if Octane is kept in mind. So what I mean by if it's kept in mind, I'm talking about all of the um, limitations of it. So if you are a production company, whether you're a small team or a large team, a small company or large company, uh, you can actually implement Octane and use a networked rendered 
um, network render option where you can link all of the different applications or Octane applications together and you can render out on a like a node like a render node throughout all the computers in your in your uh, building uh, but again you still have those limitations like the memory limitations and things like that that you have to consider so you don't want to be making a large like 30 gig scene unless you have a card that can that you can place all those textures and models on for Octane to access um, and that is pretty much it for this first video um, I covered a few basic concepts about Octane here uh, none of it is set in stone obviously things can change uh, things can uh, be improved on so on and so forth but in any case uh, this will be the first video in the series I'm gonna actually go ahead and start diving into using Octane and how to set it up for you uh, for those who are new so uh, check back um, after a little bit and see if that's up if you're interested and if you would like to subscribe and like I would appreciate that as well and you can visit me at uh, www.pwndesign.com thank you